Hi everybody, this is Dr. Scanson here with the CSC Deets on the Road and today I'm in uh, Cold Spring Family Dentistry with Dr. Jeff Griffith. Well, you want to um, thank you for taking us into your office today to show us around. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Pleasure to have you. Hey, Dr. Jeff, uh, we can see here that uh, you went to a really great school, the University of Minnesota, so we like to say Sky U Ma with that. Yeah. Uh, go Gophers. Go Gophers. So tell us about, um, obviously you went to a bunch of schools to become a dentist. Tell me a little bit more about uh, what that means. So um, schooling, if you want to become a dentist, you, you need to go to college first. So I went to, I went to college at the University of Minnesota. And then for me, actually, I worked for a couple years after I was done with college before I decided I wanted to go back to school to be a dentist. And uh, I actually worked at the University of Minnesota for a couple of years. I worked in a surgical laboratory, so we did a lot of uh, um, trials for different companies that the university would do. Um, it was a very interesting job. Um, in fact, it kind of, I feel, gave me a good background for some of the stuff that I do now. Um, where I do, you know, some some different surgeries. It certainly helps me suture because I did some suturing in that job. So uh, it was a good job to do before I went to dental school. And then uh, dental school, if you enter that program, it takes four years. Um, there is an optional fifth year, you know, kind of residency that you can do. Um, but basically, you would be licensed to, to practice dentistry after four years. Do you have any advice for any of our kids that might want to pursue being a dentist for their school? Um, yeah, kind of definitely want to look into it. You want to make sure you keep your grades up. You want to uh, take you know lots of science, math, um, and art is important. Uh, they actually, you know, the people on the admissions committee for dental schools like to see well-rounded individuals. So, you know, choir, art, all of that stuff is uh, something that they would look highly upon. Jeff, so now, um, you know, when we're in the, uh, in the dentist's office and in the chair sometimes, it's really hard to know what are some of those standard tools that are coming into our mouth. Do you want to show us uh, some of your standard tools that you use when you're giving checkups? Yeah, so these are the three kind of basic ones that we, we will use. So this is, of course, the, the mirror, which is really important so that uh, I don't have to you know, bend way over. Um, and we can see kind of behind some of your teeth, beside them with the mirror. So uh, being able to see things is really important. So, so yeah, and actually part of that, part of that um, being able to see would be with my, with my uh, loops here. So I can see, you know, about three times um, magnification with these. Plus I have a light here, you know, that focuses, uh, focuses on the spot that I'm looking, which is great. Um, really can't do my job even without these. It's essential, I would say. Um, this other instrument is called a periodontal probe, and that is used to check the gum tissue, uh, between the gum tissue and the teeth. So for some people that's really important because if they have a change in, in how that is measuring, then that means maybe they have a, a, a problem. But it's always good to know too that things are healthy. So that's a good tool for measuring that. And actually we call all of these things instruments because tools are not as delicate. So of course we call them instruments. Um, this is an explorer. Uh, that is just used to sort of feel um, the edges of teeth or maybe even feel decay uh, or a cavity. But a lot of times we can see a cavity as well, but sometimes we can't see um, like how a filling might match up with a tooth. So that's used to kind of feel uh, just different surfaces in your mouth. Now, when you took these out for us, they came out of a sealed bag. What, what was that all about? Well, this, the bag is sealed up and then um, put into a sterilizer and then it's steam sterilized so that everything, you know, if there's any sort of bacteria that might be on the instrument after they're washed, because when we use them uh, on a patient, then we, of course, wash them to clean them, but then they have to be sterilized too to get rid of any sort of microscopic uh, bacteria or virus that might be left behind. Well, and we, we all have been learning a little bit more about viruses and some of the protective gear that we wear. And I see that uh, you're wearing a mask today. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is a different mask than what we used to wear before the coronavirus. 
Um, this one is more protective. It filters out way more of the, uh, you know, smaller particles. So it, it should really filter out most virus particles, which is important to, you know, keep me safe, keep, uh, you know, um, keep the hygienists and the assistants here safe, and then it also keep all of our patients safe. So. All right, so Dr. Jeff, you have uh, you obviously have a lot of equipment here. I'm imagining you have some specialized equipment as a dentist to help us uh, get our teeth right. So. Yeah, so uh, one of the kind of things that I think is pretty cool is this machine here. Um, this is part of the machine. It has a you know specialized camera. So if somebody breaks their tooth, we can use this camera to take a picture of their teeth and from that, then we can do a 3D design and kind of create a new tooth. Um, this machine then will communicate with the one right behind us over here. Um, this machine actually will cut, you know, a new tooth out of porcelain so that then we can bond it onto someone's tooth and basically fix their tooth um, pretty much good as new. And so, and then after it's been cut, then it goes into this third machine, um, takes us about, you know, 10 minutes or so uh, to cut, then another 20 in this furnace. This furnace will then, you know, it hardens the porcelain, puts a nice glaze finish on it so it'll feel like your other teeth. And then once that's done, then we bond it in for the person and they get a brand new tooth. So you can make somebody a new tooth? Absolutely, yes. And, and that's, that's if, you know, the tooth has still got a good base, a good root. Um, if it doesn't have that, then sometimes we would do an implant. Uh, an implant is basically just an artificial root um, that we put in for somebody. And um, we have kind of a specialized machine for that as well. Oh, let's uh, go see it. Yeah, that is around the corner here. And that is this machine. So this is a 3D x-ray machine. Um, you would stand in in place here and that uh, this machine actually will circle around a person's head and then give us a three-dimensional x-ray which then helps us plan where the artificial root should go and then it actually will help us you know place it for the person as well so that we get a, a good long-lasting result so dr jeff i see a lot of technology in your office would you say that's a pretty important part of what you do um, to help you be successful at your job I would say yes, it just helps us, um, you know, do, I, I would say perform better treatment okay. uh, for people. So yes, it's a very important part. Any final advice for our kids out there? Um, Drink Mountain Dew, eat candy, never brush at night, right? Always brush, twice a day, always at night. Um, Mountain Dew, very seldom, not, not very much Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is a treat. Yeah. Yeah, and every, then brush your teeth. Every once in a while, it's okay. Okay. So, yep, brush and floss. All right, thanks, Dr. Jeff, for having us in today.